A, a significant part of my, uh, you know, my objective is to spread tourism across the country. Eh? Mm -hmm. Today in East, tourism is bringing about $3.2 billion. Eh? You are very soft-spoken. Uh, it looks like you don't want to pick up a fight. Is that the Mr. Govoka that has survived all these years? I discovered uh, quite early in life that uh, you can get go far if you just talk. Hello and welcome to the Lens at 177 and uh, with the upcoming one year anniversary of the coalition government in power, today we are talking to the leader of the Sodal Party, also the Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister for Tourism and Civil Aviation, Vilayam uh, Welcome to the program, sir. Uh, first question for you, uh, how has been the first year for you in office? <coughs> oh, thank you, Anis. Thank you for, uh, for this program. Uh, yes, indeed. Um, somebody reminded me last week. I said, hey, this time last year you were in election, so we had all that, uh, you know, all those activities at this period last year, during this period last year. And I said, yeah, I, I kind of forgotten, huh? because it's been pretty, uh, pretty intense, um, the first 12 months. Um, you know, uh, putting in place uh, a new direction after 16 years, um, it's quite challenging, eh? but um, so far so good. Mm. I think we've come through the 12 months uh, quite uh, pleased with what we've accomplished over the, over the last uh, this year. Mm. Yeah. What are some of the handicaps uh, you have found in, uh, first of all, in the tourism ministry or tourism industry as a whole? Mm. Anis, we just had our tourism convention last Friday. <coughs> you may recall that the tourism convention was the event of the year back in those days. Um, it did not happen during the, uh, the previous uh, regime. And uh, during the day, there were people, people, asked, you know, people were asking the question or, you know, and saying, wow. We've never asked this kind of questions before, you know. I mean, people are so free in what, you know, in what they're expressing. Eh? And, um, you know, and that, I, I, I suppose, is, the, uh, is what we've given the country over the last 12 months. Eh? That freedom to do whatever they want to do, what they want to do. Eh? Um, I, I was amazed because um, you reminded me about my removal from Tourism Fiji back in 2007. And I was out of the picture totally from there, the time onwards. Eh? And uh, I was quite surprised that people said, you know, during, during all these years, we could not say things the way we, we, you know, we, we do today. Yeah? Mm. Um, and for tourism, um, it's been a brilliant year. Uh, the pent up demand that was there during COVID has kind of just exploded. <laughs> you know, uh, the pressure is off and people are traveling quite, um, quite widely. And Fiji uh, is number one. Uh, in, in the in the in this part of the world, because of the quality of our products, eh? mm -hmm. yeah. um, the limiting factor, <coughs> uh, as you know, would be the uh, the shortage of rooms in the country. Eh? You may have noticed that uh, for quite uh, a bit or quite a lot of the year during the year, it was very hard to get rooms. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, even locals couldn't get rooms, eh? and uh, that is because of the demand from overseas, from abroad. And compounded by the fact that um, we've got some, uh, compounded in a good sense that we, we, we acquired some new uh, planes for FG OS. So there's a uh, mismatch between the air capacity, the number of seats, and the ground capacity, the number of rooms. Eh? And that has been the limiting factor in tourism this year. Eh? Um, that is now uh, generating a lot of interest uh, to build more properties, eh? more hotels. Eh? And you're seeing a lot of that happening. Eh? Mm -hmm. So if, if, there's any, if there's any challenges, it's, it was a mismatch between the room, room capacity and the airline seats. Eh? Mm -hmm. So when did uh, someone did not realize that we have to take care of this uh, situation? <laughs> uh, I suppose, uh, you know, we did not realize the extent of the, um, of the, uh, the pent-up demand out there. Uh, 
you know, in hindsight, he could have said, look, we should have built more rooms during COVID, two years of nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not easy. Uh, um, some of our hotels uh, took the time to renovate eh, during COVID. And they're doing very well now. Eh? Mm -hmm. Some left it a bit too late and uh, now renovating in a time when they should have been reaping the, uh, you know, the, the benefits of the, of the pent-up demand that we see now. Eh? Uh, we need to build more hotels. Um, building hotels uh, currently, uh, during that period, was not always easy. Eh? Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of factors came, uh, needed to be uh, aligned. Uh, and we are addressing that uh, currently. Eh? Mm -hmm. The ease of doing business, eh? mm -hmm. the regulatory uh, regime mm -hmm. can be very demotivating. Eh? Mm -hmm. And if you want to make that uh, want to streamline that so that investors can come in and build. Say if you can build a hotel within two years, mm -hmm. that, that would be quite significant. Sir. Mm -hmm. Right now it takes about three or four years. Sir. And you know, amazingly, a lot of that is due to regulations. Mm -hmm. What do you have to, you know, the process of regulating, the process of um, getting all the approvals. Our government, uh, there's a committee in place now that's, that is looking at um, sim simplifying the process. Um, and you know, we, we normally call it the ease of doing business. Eh? And I think we can build a, uh, a hotel now within two years, uh, or maximum three. Yeah? But that, that would be quite significant. Eh? Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, <coughs> going forward uh, in the next three years, uh, I, I know you have mentioned uh, you want to see a million tourists coming into Fiji. But what is the overarching uh, achievement you want to be recognized as uh, come 2026? A, um, a, a significant part of my, uh, you know, my objective is to spread tourism across the country. Eh? Mm. Today in East, tourism is bringing about $3.2 billion, eh? $3.2. But it's confined to the Coral Coast, mm. yeah, Denarau, Nandi, Mamanuda, and a bit of Yasawa, and a bit of Serua. Eh? So, that is 40% of GDP, more than 40% of GDP. Um, the potential to double and triple that is there mm. if we are committed to developing tourism in other parts of Fiji. You know, if you look at it, it's only Nandronga, Navosa, and Ba. Mm. You know, um, there is the um, Sunshine, Gold, Sunshine Coast eh, in Ra. Yesawa can do a lot more. Mm. And Vonulevu will be benefiting from a $200 million US uh, World Bank funding to develop the infrastructure in Vono level for tourism investments. Eh? Uh, primarily uh, creating an enabling environment so that tourism can grow uh, further in Vono level. Eh? Mm. Vono level has huge potential. So really, today $3.2 billion. Grow up, on, uh, grow up grow other areas. You, you can be talking about $10, $12 billion in tour tourism receipts. Eh? Mm. When people say, why are we relying on tourism? Uh, uh, why not uh, agriculture, uh, giving the background of COVID? Do you get uh, angry with that argument? No. Um, it's, uh, look, you, you, you have to, uh, you got to mix, uh, you mix all the sectors. Eh? Um, I don't think any other sector can, uh, can replace tourism. And I'm talking about three to, 3.2 billion dollars right now. Eh? Um, <coughs> agriculture, unfortunately, is still under 10 percent of GDP, eh? including sugar. Eh? Um, so it has a long way to go. Uh, but you know, um, like everyone else, I'd like to see that to become dominance. Uh, but going back to what I said, tourism is still limited to only two provinces. The other 12 provinces, when they kick in. There's no beating tourism. You know, it's, it's just going to grow, um, and I don't think any other sector can can uh, match tourism in that sense. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, tourism Fiji uh, uh, CEO, uh, he's doing a good job. Uh, likewise, Fiji Airways CEO, he's doing good job. Both are expatriates. Do you wish to have locals in that position? Um, both uh, Andre Villon and uh, Brand Hill are very special people. Eh? Um, you, uh, you look at Fiji Airways, many airlines 
fell by the wayside during COVID. You know, this disappeared. Fiji OA survived, and it is doing extremely well. Eh? Uh, the bottom line is looking good. Uh, the takings uh, on almost on a weekly basis is surpassing anything we ever had in the past. Um, and of course, it's highly rated now, uh, you know, get, you know, top awards. And uh, other routes uh, opening up. Eh? Um, we needed someone like Andre at a time like COVID and right now, eh? you know, he, he's got uh, experience with South African Airlines, he's got Air Mauritius and, you know, and uh, it, it's just, you know, the right time for the, for the you know, for this time. Eh? Mm -hmm. Uh, but, you know, uh, he himself is saying that, you know, Bill, uh, you know, uh, won't be here forever. Uh, but he's grooming some, some really special people there in Fiji Airways. He has uh, reduced the expatriate content of Fiji Airways in a very significant way. I think he's uh, next in line uh, would be 90% locals. You know, you know, he, you know he's the uh, CEO, MD. Right under him would be the division heads. And I think the vast majority of them are local people. Mm. And one of them is, is ready to come up, to go, to go up to number one. Eh? Mm. In similar fashion, uh, Tourism Fiji, Brent is the right, time, uh, right person for, the, for this time. Mm. Um, and he's done wonderfully, uh, great job. But right under him are also uh, uh, a line of people who are ready to take over. Mm. So, um, Yes, we want to grow our, our local um, local leadership, local management, and they are ready to take over. Eh? Mm. But I need I need to uh, you know I need to stress the fact that these two gentlemen, you know, their 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 time in Fiji at this critical time is a blessing to us. Eh? It's been a blessing to the country. Eh? Mm. Was there any time in the past year that you had to pick up the phone, Brent? Can you do this this way, uh, Andre? Can you do this this way? I, I do that every day. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, we talk every day. Yeah? Yeah. Um, they're, they're very, uh, uh, you know, they're very uh, responsive, uh, very inclusive in the way they do things. And they, uh, they, they respect the wish of the, of the government of the day. Yeah? Mm -hmm. you, you remember uh, once we came in, uh, we asked them to take back all the, uh, the stuff that were laid off during uh, COVID. Yeah? And uh, they were almost there now. Eh? A lot of uh, a lot of the guys have come back to Fiji always, eh? and similarly um, ADS. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we uh, we work very closely together, and um, I think uh, the relationship is very is very strong. Um, I suppose we speak the same language. You know, it helps in helps in communicating. Eh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Govoka. We'll continue the discussion after this short break. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back and today we are talking to Deputy Prime Minister William Agovoka. Mr. Agovoka, God forbid something like COVID happens. Right. <coughs> and he's, um, I've had a, you know, I had, I've had a few years in tourism. Eh? And in all the crises we've had in the past, there was always a playbook, eh? the coup. Right? We had 87, we had 2000, 2006. We developed a system on how to, you know, on how to survive um, those types of crises and uh, detail the um, cyclones, the flooding and the like. Yeah? With COVID, there was no playbook. Huh? And um, I was in parliament, parliamentarian, and I, I asked my guys in tourism, I said, guys, how did you do this? I mean, you know, like I knew, I mean, like I said, no playbook. They didn't. We were living virtually from day to day. Yeah? Mm. And in some cases, like Fiji Airways, the, the tail just ran dry. Yeah? There was just no money there, you know? And that's why they, they laid off uh, all those guys. Yeah? Mm. But luckily, uh, there was intervention from the Asia Development Bank. Mm. 
and some other smart finances by on ray moving moving things around which enable them to you know to survive uh, and build uh. likewise the hotels uh, um <laughs> yeah the what what is important now is that we, we, we i think we know how to live with the covid now uh. mm. rather than closing down totally like we did will never happen again. Mm. We, we, we should learn. I think we know now how to live with COVID. Eh? Mm. Uh, you know, it's still around, but we're managing it better now. Eh? Mm. I think uh, it was just something that was phenomenal. I mean, the whole world didn't know how to handle this. Mm. Um, yeah, to answer your question, uh, if anything comes up again, I think there's a playbook here that we can, we can follow. Eh? Mm. Uh, <coughs> Does that playbook contain the clause that nobody will be sent home from the tourism industry, <coughs> be it the airlines or the hotels? Um, it, will, it will depend on the, um, on the general community globally, uh, or whether they want, still want to travel, believe in that we can survive this mm -hmm. and continue to travel. Albeit it will be a reduced, you know, it will be reduced volume. But I think we know better now uh, that we cannot just send everyone home. Mm. It, there's there's, there's got to be this belief that there is always going to be tomorrow, mm. yeah. And, and I think that will be that will be a huge factor going forward. Mm. Laying off people like the way we did, I don't think will will be uh, will be happening again. Mm. It won't be part of the playbook. Mm. <coughs> you've you've spoken about the infrastructure uh, infrastructure development, hotel development. Uh, first question based on that is uh, how will it impact climate change and what mitigating factors? Can your ministry uh, put in <coughs> to ensure that there is a minimum climate? Mm. And is today, when you uh, when you build something, the climate change factor is very much part of the equation. Eh? Uh, we have a very tough, sometimes too tough, environment uh, department here in Fiji, mm. um, and and they are adamant. And they, you know, and they enforce it that climate uh, factors are factored in into the in any developments. Eh? Mm. Even the banks, they won't they won't lend you money mm. if you don't satisfy their climate change uh, criteria mm. in the in the um, that goes with your lending. Eh? Mm. So um, mm. I don't think there's going to be any fear in that. Uh, whatever we build now going forward will be very sensitive. To, uh, to the needs of the, uh, of the environment mm. and, and climate change. Mm. Uh, has any developer, tourism developer called you? Minister, can you have a look into this? Uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm facing problems. <coughs> there have been a, a number of uh, issues to do with some approvals. Um, the, uh, a huge challenge with us in Fiji and is the, the number of agencies we have to go to to get anything approved, eh? mm. I think at one time there during the um, during the uh, economic uh, summit at GPH, when we were just you know trying to settle in, there was a particular project they needed 23 agencies to approve it. Eh? Mm. You know uh, that in itself is uh, inviting all sorts of complications. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, so. Um, we're trying to streamline that, mm. you know, um, bring, r reduce the uh, the 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 the, the, uh, the number of uh, agencies involved. I mean, not not uh, not foregoing any any issues that that you know, as part of the as part of the project, but um, make it make it make it easy, make it simpler. Huh? Mm. Yeah, it would, it would make my work, my life easier, knowing that uh, a project is starting. I won't be getting any calls. Please, can you talk to this agency? Can you talk to this department? Which, <laughs> which I do quite a bit. Eh? Pick up the phone and try and talk to uh, people to, to try and uh, approve things. Eh? Mm. And um, I think it is one, thi one thing that happened during the 16 years was that people were afraid to take ownership of things. You know, like uh, people just turned up to work and didn't really want to do didn't want to really do much because of uh, the, the fear factor, I suppose. Eh? Mm. There was too much control in their lives. Mm. 
and uh, hence, hence the, uh, you know, the, the delays in many things because no one was willing to make a call. Eh? Mm. We we're trying to empower people to make the call. Mm. Somebody told me, said, now we're not afraid to make mistakes. Mm. You know, uh, mistakes is part of, part of life. Eh? And we can always correct it. Eh? Mm. But the fear factor that was huge during, during the last, uh, the previous administration. Eh? Mm. The Denrau, uh, Denrau area, do you think it's overdeveloped and uh, development should stop there or there's still space for that place to grow? Ultimately, Denrau will have 12 properties, eh? 12 hotels. I think we're up to seven now. Eh? Yeah. And uh, there, should be, there should be max in Denrau, uh, 12 properties, in addition to the accommodation and other businesses in the Denrau area. That would, that would just about take up all the space that had been, uh, that was allocated mm. for uh, development and all that for hotels. Huh? But um, let's not look at uh, Denarau in isolation. Eh? You've got to look at the whole Nandi Bay. Eh? You know, if you look at uh, Nandi Bay starting from Bunda mm -hmm. and you look at Lomo Lomo and uh, Maisoso and uh, some islands in there, Nandi Bay is still only 10% developed. Eh? There's still a lot more to go. Eh? Um, so, Denarau has started it. We can, we can replicate Denarau in other parts of Nandi Bay up to Soweni or Wunda. Eh? Mm. Yeah, and there are plans in place for that. Eh? Mm. Do you know investors are lined up already for, to come into this area? <coughs> we have a number, a number of investors. Uh, they're going through the process. Some of the plans are quite uh, gigantic, mm. really huge. Eh? So, uh, the growth in the Nandi Bay area over the next 10, 20 years will be phenomenal. Eh? Yeah. Can you define huge? Judge? Well, you know, uh, you're talking about a uh, stadium, sports stadium, uh, 30, 40,000 seater, uh, five or seven hotels around it, um, parks and all sorts of entertainment, recreation uh, facility, you know, uh, facilities. That's, that's, that's the kind of huge I'm talking about. So where is that application? Within the Nandi area. One, 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 one of the, one of the, pro, one of the uh, areas in there is going to be seeing something that, that's similar. Huh? So, something like that, yeah. And where is that venture currently? Uh, uh, dialogue is happening. Um, you know, approvals uh, are, are happening. Uh, acquisition of land. Um, we, we've identified the land and all that. But, you know, that's where, the, that's what we'll, we'll be expecting. Mm. And that's the way we are going uh, in terms of Nandi Bay. Yeah? Mm. In terms of sports, and, uh, I mentioned about the stadium. One of the, uh, something that we're getting uh, from the sporting bodies is that, you know, you, you, you build a decent stadium in, in Fiji, you will see a lot more mm. international competition in the country. Yeah? I think, um, only um, the national stadium is at par mm. right, with the international standards, but then Suwa does not have accommodation, accommodation right? Mm. So if you can build it in the West, uh, a, a good sized stadium, the accommodation facility uh, structure is there in the West. Eh? Mm. So if anything, I'd like to see a stadium built uh, in, the immediate, in, the, in the immediate future. Mm. Nandi Airport future plan expansion, uh, there's not much area there. Uh, or how do you see expansion of the national, international airport? Um, yes, you're right. Um, right now, when uh, there are some peak hours, when you have about five or seven jets arriving and departing, it can, it can be a little tight. Um, there are plans in place to, to expand that, uh, create more gates. Um, but it, it is something that is, uh, that is very much part of our plans. There's a master plan mm -hmm. for Nandi airports and to address that, uh, that congestion issue. Mm -hmm. do, you, or do you get reports or do you accept there's a drug usage problem amongst tourists who come to the country? And it's, uh, the way I hear it uh, is that the drug problem is more a local one, a local problem. Huh? It is not related to tourism. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm not aware 
of, uh, of the concern expressed by uh, the tourism industry about uh, visitors uh, bringing drugs into the country. You see, when you, uh, I was a hotelier, when you, when you have people in your, in your hotel, you can tell what is happening there. And you, you know, you, you have, you have the kind of control, and you're controlling your hotel. You know, you can be sitting on 50 acres or 100 acres, mm. and you can, you can know what is happening in your hotel. Eh? Mm. You know, because you have security, you have staff, you know, and uh, if something like that is happening, uh, the hotelier would know um, right away. Yeah? And um, right now, there's nothing like that uh, uh, that is happening or that we know of. Eh? Mm. Thank you very much, Mr. Govoka. We'll take a short break and see you on the other side. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back and Deputy Prime Minister Willem Govoka is with me. Uh, Mr. Govoka, uh, this time last year the election had ended. Uh, no, no government was formed and everyone was looking up to Sodalpa, which side you were going on. Could you briefly describe uh, personally for you how difficult it was for you to get your party behind you to get into this coalition with uh, PEP and NFP? Mm -hmm. And he's, and he's at the outset, um, I don't think you want to go through what I went through <laughs> uh, that period last year. You know, the whole country was uh, looking to Sodelpa and the Sodelpa leader. And uh, it was one of the most difficult periods in, uh, you know, in, uh, in my life, uh, also with the party. Yeah? But, uh, we managed to follow a process in place. Uh, we invited the uh, both parties to come and present to us, and they did twice. And as you know from the voting, uh, it was a touch and go, eh? a very close call. Eh? But um, eventually, we made uh, we made that call, and uh, and you remember, was it Christmas Eve last year, right? And um, I stood in Parliament to nominate uh, to you know the name of the uh, the Honourable Rambuka to be Prime Minister. But I tell you what, it was one week uh, that was quite intense. Eh? Um, luckily, you uh, you have your mobile phone; you can turn it off. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what it was like. Eh? Um, we uh, there was a process in place. Eh? Um, and we have a management board, which is the supreme body within uh, within Sodalpa. And uh, it is always good to have something like that. Eh? Um, we we uh, debated things uh, quite intensely during that period, um, and it came down to the vote. Uh, and, and I think it was done in a very fair manner. Eh? Mm -hmm. I, I think both um, both uh, PEP, uh, NFP, and Fiji First uh, were given all the opportunity, um, and the call came to the management board, and that was it. Eh? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, apart from the official lines of communication, was there any time uh, your son-in-law, the former Secretary General of Fiji First, called you, dead, please? come away <laughs> you know when he's um, <coughs> there was always something that uh, people could never understand during the eight years in Parliament eh? I mean I served I sat on the other side of the aisle for eight years he sat on this side of the aisle I was telling people look this is politics okay he, uh, we are family son-in-law our father-in-law but you know he believes in certain policies he believes it's good for the country. I disagree. I believe that my policies is better for the country. That's it. Nothing, nothing else. Okay, it's, it's politics. It's above board. Uh, nothing personal in it. 
Um, and when we, uh, and you know, people ask me, what do you, do you guys talk at home? I said, yeah, we talk about the grandkids. You know, we talk about, you know, the, we talk about rugby. We talk about other things. Huh? Uh, but, you know, um, we are professional enough to know uh, how far we can go, huh? mm -hmm. you know, and then we made it a, we made it a rule that we wouldn't talk politics. I, I tell you, uh, people don't believe me when I say this. We never talk politics, never. Um, people, people don't, people don't believe that, but it's true. I, uh, you know, um, I believe we were both uh, professionals. We both knew uh, what the calling was. Uh, he had to protect his body, and I had to protect mine. And people, you know, uh, the biggest challenge for me during the campaign was that people could not appreciate the fact that I was an SDL person from 2001. I was loyal to the party. Unfortunately, uh, there were people who said, you know, your problem is your party leader is close to, uh, you know, and then unfortunately did harm the party in some way. Yeah? And I was very disappointed that people did, could not appreciate my loyalty to the party and that I was a professional and that uh, politics is politics, family is family. I, I don't think Fiji is mature enough <laughs> at this time to, uh, you know, to appreciate that. Eh? Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, end of the, uh, the, the situation of that is that I, uh, <coughs> he never called me once to tell me dead, uh, take, take Fiji first, mm. yeah? not, not him, not my daughter, no one in the family ever called me, mm. never. We knew that. We don't, we don't talk about things like that. <coughs> Given uh, uh, Mr. Seth Kayum has resigned recently on medical grounds, as father-in-law, have you been updated on his current condition overseas? Mm. Yes, I'm aware of uh, the situation. Uh, he has come through okay. Um, we ask. Uh, our, our daughter is the one, uh, you know, who uh, keep, keep us uh, updated. Because I, you know, we, we, my, my wife is the one who really is very close to them. Huh? Uh, and you know, mother-in-laws, eh? they don't believe in politics or anything. They just say what they want to say. <laughs> so they, they just, <laughs> see, you know, um, yeah, he's okay. He's okay. Uh, it took a little longer than expected, uh, but he's okay. Uh, and I just wish people would give him their, you know, his space. Eh? Uh, I, I get a bit, uh, get, a, get a bit saddened when uh, people are still bring up uh, a lot of old uh, issues mm -hmm. and uh, being very personal about uh, things. Eh? I just wish that we could become mature as a as a nation, mm -hmm. and we deal we deal on issues and leave personalities, uh, personal things aside. Eh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Does uh, your daughter call you up to confide in your dad? Why is this happening to him, uh, to the husband, or issues that are of no interest to the family? My daughter Annie is, is a pretty strong, uh, very strong-willed uh, uh, person. Eh? I mean, she's the youngest, mm -hmm. and you know, I've often said in this princess. You know, your youngest daughter is always a princess. Eh? She's very strong. Mm -hmm. um, She's uh, looking after the family while he's away um, and doing a wonderful job of it. Mm. Um, she has two brothers, also uh, very strong. Uh, we network as a family, but we do know that she's, she's quite a, a strong person. Mm. Yeah. You are very soft-spoken. Uh, it looks like you don't want to pick up a fight. Is that the Mr. Govoka that has survived all these years? And it's, yeah, um, we can reason things out. Eh? You know, um, I discovered uh, quite early in life that uh, you can get go far if you just talk. Eh? Mm. The reason things out. Um, and that has been uh, the way I do things. Eh? Um, I became a hotelier in the tourism industry, and that's why you also need to be, you know, to be the, be the kind of person that I became, uh, um, and I, uh, you know, I made it to the top 
mm -hmm. in uh, in tourism, uh, and you know it's um, it's the way you relate to people. Huh? Now you like for instance, if if you uh, if you run an operation in Fiji owned by people from outside, they trust you to manage their business, their assets, and all that. You know, so they have to have that faith in you, eh? and they have to see you and say, okay. We see the way he relates to people. We are comfortable with the way he relates to people. He's not going to, you know what I mean? We're not going to worry about this guy. Yeah? He's, uh, he gets on, he gets, he gets on with people. And that's the person I became uh, uh, most of my life. Of course, uh, during the campaign, people were saying, why don't, why don't you start yelling or start, uh, you know, start being different? Saying, hey, let's just talk policies. Let's reason, reason things out. Uh, and um, you know, and see how it goes. Huh? Mm. Um, and I'm and I'm happy uh, with the way that he went about things because Sadapa focused a lot on policies during the uh, during the election. Huh? Mm. Uh, it's unfortunate that uh, our people in Fiji still want that, still want that uh, the confrontational kind of, <laughs> kind of stuff. Huh? Um, but we were very firm on what we believed in, and. Uh, for instance, um, this uh, TELS thing. Mm. TELS, you know, you know what it what TELS was. Fifty-seven thousand of our young and women and women mm. owed six hundred fifty million dollars. Right? Mm. And I we heard horror stories of what they were doing to try and repay that. Eh? Mm. So we made it a policy. Said, look, we're just going to wipe off this this off. Eh? Mm. And when you when you when you have the clarity, you know, you can come up, uh, you know, with better policies as opposed to. Being loud, being confrontational, and you, you mm. miss the points. Eh? Mm. We were very focused on that, and today, Tals is gone. Mm. There's relief in many homes in the country now. Eh? Mm. Uh, scholarships, unprecedented, $148 million now. That, that's also mm. Delta stuff. Eh? Mm. So we just want to have good policies and reason things out, eh? mm. as opposed to being confrontational. Eh? Mm. Uh, maybe the, uh, the leader going forward, maybe someone with a different style. But as for me, that's my style. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this, this sort of power of the past, uh, uh, rift, 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 is the party discipline now and uh, <coughs> strictly uh, everyone is behind you and uh, what you're doing? Yeah, um, <coughs> that was a huge challenge, huge challenge for us. Uh, we were badly damaged by the, uh, the dissension within the party, yeah? um, you know. Uh, people left the party. Um, a lot of acrimony, um, but what what we've decided this time is to support the three ministers, uh, Honorable Rondondro, Honorable Vasu, and myself. The party to get behind us, and we have three very important uh, ministries: uh, education, the biggest budget in the country is education, and of course I've talked about towels and scholarships and all that. Um, and uh, Honorable Vasu, the Itoki Affairs, um, and myself, Minister of Tourism and Civil Aviation. We focus on what we're doing, uh, results, results oriented in the way we, uh, we go, you know, we control, we handle our stuff. Mm -hmm. The party will benefit from that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the party is saying, let's support our ministers, let's do a good job now, and it will stand, up, and, and it will stand us in good stead come 2026. Mm -hmm. We can fall back on something and say, look, this is what we accomplished for, for, the, for the people. Mm -hmm. So there's unity of purpose in that area to support the three ministers uh, in government today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in your manifesto was a call for release of uh, the Garnivalu, the high chief of Manate mm -hmm. who was released today. Uh, that's an achievement, number one. Mm -hmm. And we all know, uh, data shows, uh, if you win Manate you win in a general election. Uh, is the Garanwalu a Sodalpa man? He was, uh, if you look back into the history of uh, SDL, he was the one who formed the SDL with, uh, with Ngarase. Mm. SDL was primarily a party from Naita Syria, and Ngarase became the, the party leader when they were looking for someone of that caliber to lead the party. Yeah? Mm. So yes, it's, still, it's very much a, a Naita Syria party. Yeah? Mm. SDL, now Sodalpa. Huh? And I'm very happy to uh, see the release of the Ngarantura mm. and it was very it was key to uh, to one of our uh, one of our policies mm. uh, in terms of 
you know, reconciliation, let bygones be bygones, you know, let's, let's, let's move forward. Um, and I'm, you know, specifically Nagarani Balu was, was, uh, was one of those. Mm -hmm. huh? yeah. So the party will look forward to his support come 2026? Yes, definitely, definitely. The, uh, the leadership today, the president uh, of the party is from Neta Siri. Uh, and of course, uh, Honorable Don Ronro, uh, you know, uh, he was part of the party and his support. Um, Neta Siri, Neta Siri is really huge for, for, for Sudalpa, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Govoka, thank you very much for speaking to us and uh, taking the time to sit down with me. Thank, thank you, Anis. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>